Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. All right, let's get straight into it. Drawing female anatomy like Tracy Yardley. So Tracy Yardley, uh, when I'm trying to emulate this style, I will always start by drawing, um, by drawing the head. And the head is, it's, it basically what it is, is it's a circle. So it's a, you're trying to draw as accurate a circle, but it's not a regular circle. It's sort of a, it's like a squashed uh, kind of circle. The skulls of the Sonic characters, specifically when Tracy Yardley draws them, uh, he draws the skulls um, a little squashed than normal, so it's not oblong like this or, or to the side, um, but it's also not this, this perfect circle, um, which I'm having a little bit of trouble getting here. But basically, this circle that you're trying to draw for the character is you're trying to just you're trying to create a nice, uh, smooth, even surface on each side. So you don't want any of these these things here jutting out. Um, so if you can get the circle going, um, then you can draw the rest of the character. So here I'm trying to, almost had it, trying to get this circle down, uh, just like how Yardley does. So it, you might remember, you might recall the, uh, the SpongeBob episode um, where he is trying to be an artist, and we have uh, young Squidward at the rec center, and he's teaching him um, how to do uh, art. And SpongeBob has this very unique technique where he essentially draws uh, a very detailed uh, character face and uh, a human face. And, and and what he does is he, he has this interesting technique where he will actually... Uh, go back uh, from that detailed drawing and draw a, an extremely, uh, from that detailed face, he'll erase those lines, which will then reveal the, the very foundations of, that, of that, um, that image, which will then allow him to, to draw the perfect circle. So I kind of wish I had that, little, that ability there. Speaking of, that was an insane episode. I mean, the way that SpongeBob is able to so charismatically, uh, you know, add whimsy to art is just, it's absolutely breathtaking. And it's something that I try and emulate um, in my art as well, uh, that, that same kind of whimsy. That episode in particular, the way that they show the deconstruction of art being this, this almost monolithic being that can't be quite contained, and yet the young mind, that you know, the mind that isn't held back by pride, is able to enjoy and is able to create the art that actually pe people enjoy. And that, I think that comes through quite nicely um, in that episode when, uh, when that money bags guy comes in and, and sees SpongeBob's art and, and says that he will have fame and fortune. Obviously, we know the story there where Squidward ultimately takes over the the shop um much to his detriment because he knocks the head off foolishly you'd think in that sort of environment he would he would pay he would pay better attention to um where that where those ceilings are those low rise ceilings otherwise you know you come up with all kinds of issues there um and that being the shenanigans that unfold within that episode but I think what's even more cunning of the of the developers, the producers, the artists on that show, is that they actually are able to um, show the deconstruction of the human face in such a way and make the audience believe that SpongeBob actually has the the capacity to to render the lines underneath that were once. Um, drawn over as guidelines and erased as like these, you know, these thick lines that are able to remain there even after um, being erased. I know as a kid that absolutely, it blew my mind. I thought, could I just draw a first a detailed face and then erase those lines afterwards? I, you know, I actually thought that and I'm sure, I'm sure all of you did at that time as well. Which, which makes you think, you know, the old Spongebob episodes, they were actually the best. They, they, they were easily the best for a couple of reasons. One, the, the humor is enjoyed by both adults and also by, um, by children alike. Uh, but, but then at the same time, you know, they have these commentaries on switching things up, breaking down the foundations, you know, um, 
adding this meta humor and these real life parallels because Squidward as a teacher, you know, we've all had a teacher that that is that is striven to um, have their art um, be pushed into their students' faces. I mean, I can count on one finger how many times I've had that happen to me. So, you know, at the same time, we all can some it's something we can resonate with. You know, far be it from us to to see splinters. Splinters are something we can resonate with, but it's not something we can all resonate with. Whereas all of us, we can resonate with that episode um, where SpongeBob turns um, the the face um, into the the guidelines underneath, producing the perfect circle. And uh, I just I find it fascinating every time I watch that episode how it never ceases to make me cry. Uh, every single time I watch it, I, I always find a a lone tear dripped down my face, my soft cheek. And, and it's like, man, I just, they don't make the episodes like they used to anymore. And um, so, yeah, I, in saying that, I am having a bit of trouble with this, with this circle. So um, I'm just going to move on to the next part. So <clears throat> we're going to draw the body here of the character. And then we're just going to add the limbs which is an important part, and then also the, the, the legs. And then we're going to add the feet. And obviously, it wouldn't be complete without hands. So yeah, this is basically my tutorial on how to draw the female anatomy. Um, please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next episode. See you later. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye.